Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. I do want to encourage you to check out our other podcast today. I'm focusing on public domain video theater, where for the foreseeable future, we will be featuring episodes of Racket Squad, as well as the Bulldog Drummond movies from the late 1930s. Uh, you can check those out, videotheater.greatdetectives.net, or it's one of the featured playlists on our YouTube page. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Bulldog Drummond. The original air date, August 13th, 1945, and the title is Help Wanted. See, I have Captain Drummond's permission. Oh, he'll be here next week as usual to tell about another adventure, but this story is more or less my own. All right, Denny. Go right ahead. Thank you, sir. I call this story Help Wanted. It began one morning when Captain Drummond and I were separating for the first time in our long association. He was going on a highly secret government mission alone. Police Inspector Hogan and I saw him off on the train. Well, Denny, he's on his way. 
Uh, yes, Inspector. I suppose I might as well go home. Captain Drummond. Calling Captain Drummond. My word, what's that? Captain Drummond, please come to the station master's office immediately. It is urgent. No, oh dear, and Captain Drummond's on the train. Come on, Denny. We'll see what the call is about. The station master's office is right over here. Captain Drummond, you are wanted in the station master's office. Well, what in the world do you suppose it's about, Inspector Hogan? Well, it's only a guess, but maybe Drummond left some excitement behind to keep you busy. <laughs> Here's the place. Uh, after you, Inspector. Okay. Oh, uh, there was a call for Captain Drummond. That's right. Well, he just left on a train. I'm his man, Denny. And I'm Inspector Hogan, Police Department. What's wrong? Come come into the inner office, please. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Denny. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Inspector, look. That man on the couch. He's dead. Dead? Oh, dear. He collapsed in the waiting room. Just before he died, he asked for Captain Drummond. I knew Drummond was leaving town today, so I paged him over the train announcing system. Just a minute. Here. Here's his wallet. Frederick Trent. Frederick Trent. Oh, yes. I knew I'd seen him before. The Trent Trio. It's a vaudeville nightclub act. They're sharpshooters. He acts playing at the Orpheum this week. Inspector, look at the man's arm. Yes, hypodermic punctures. What about them? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Frederick Trent was murdered. Now, now, hold everything, Denny. Don't go jumping to conclusions and don't go finding any clues. I'll have the body taken to the morgue and the medical examiner will decide the cause of death. That's his business. You'll find out that I'm correct, Inspector. I intend to follow through on this case just as Captain Drummond would. Just a moment, please. I'm coming. Yes? The uh, Employment Bureau sent me over. Oh, I've been expecting you. Come in. Nice joint. What kind of guy is the boss? Why, uh, some people find me rather charming. Oh, the social error is on me, boss. Uh, the agency said they were sending over a qualified ballot. That's me all over. Hubert, the perfect gentleman's gentleman. Hubert? Yeah, Hubert. And no cracks. Well, uh, perhaps I should explain. For years, I've been Captain Hugh Drummond's man. He's out of town on an important case has come up, you see. And I'm acting in his place. I get it. You're, 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 you're in the main bout, so you want me to take your place in the preliminaries. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, now, about your qualifications. Ten years on my last job. My word, that's a long time. Yeah, and I'd still have that job, only the state invited Lemons White to spend ten years in the penitentiary. Uh, Lemons White? The one and only king of the slot machine racket. Oh, what a guy he was. I, I was sort of a bodyguard, too. Well, you're just the man I'm looking for. Then it's a deal, with time and a half for overtime. What do I do first? Hubert, you and I are going to pay a visit to the morgue. We're going to pay... Uh, the... The morgue? Yes. It's the first stop on the road that will lead us to the capture of a vicious killer. I'll answer that, boss. Hello? This is Inspector Hogan. Inspector Hogan? Hey, I, 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 I ain't done nothing. Is Danny there? Oh, oh, yeah, sure, he's right here. It's for you, boss, and am I glad. Uh, thank you, good Hello, Inspector. Oh, uh, Denny, I just got the medical examiner's report. Uh, listen to what it says. Cause of death, diabetic shock. Yes, I see. But what about the hypodermic puncture marks? Well, Denny, Frederick Trent had diabetes. For years he'd been treating himself, like a lot of diabetics do. He injected insulin into his arm on regular schedule. Oh, dear. So there goes your murder case right out the well-known window. Uh, yes, Inspector. I'm afraid you're right. Oh, well. Did you hear that, Hubert? Yeah, I did, boss. Look, I, I'd, I'd like to fix you a drink to cheer you up. No, Hubert. Thank you just the same. Well, I suppose by this time Captain Drummond has received my telegram. He knows what a blunderer I am. Oh, cheer up, boss. Drummond's going to be away for a week. Maybe something else exciting will turn up. Maybe opportunity will knock on our door again. Or ring our doorbell. I got it. 
telegram for you. Fine here. Oh, sure. We don't tip here, bud. But thanks, opportunity. Uh, what's that? Skip it. Telegram for you, boss. Yes, I know. Probably from Captain Drummond. Don't you want to see what it says? Not particularly. Well, on account of I am naturally suspicious by nature, do you mind if I take a gander at it? No, not at all, Hubert. Oh, gee, boss, thanks. You're right, it's from Drummond. Hey, boss, we're back in the running. What? Listen to this. A diabetic could be killed by depriving him of insulin. Moiter angle still possible. Suggest you follow through. Investigate all likely suspects. Robert. My word. It could still be murder. You know, I felt it. That's male intuition. There's nothing like it. It's 8.30. We must hurry. Come along, Hubert. Sure, boss. But where? The Orpheum Theater. There's still time to make the last show. continues in just a moment. Now 
Ladies and gentlemen, what can we do for you? Uh, just a few questions, Mr. Trent, if you don't mind. Well, not at all. I assume it's in connection with my brother's death. I still can't believe Freddie's dead. I just can't believe it. Rita, <laughs> you see, my brother and Rita were engaged to be married. Here, Miss Cooper, let me offer you a chair. No, no, thank you. I'm, I'm quite all right. Rita, I think it might be a good idea if you rested a while in your dressing room. Then we'll go to dinner. Very well. Mr. Trent, I regret having to bother you at a time like this. I realize what a shock your brother's death has been to you and to Miss Cooper. Me too, Mr. Trent. But uh, has it occurred to you that your brother might have been murdered? Huh? Well, you're crazy, both of you. I don't know what you two are up to, but I won't stand for it. My brother died of a disease from which he'd suffered for many years. The medical examiner's report proves that. Yes, we realize that, but to uh, same but time... what? Well, uh, uh, perhaps I, I am mistaken. Uh, yes, I must be... Uh... Anyway, thank you, Mr. Trent, and, uh, and good evening. Come on, Hubert. You voiced, boss. Say, are you two really... Crazy? We're sure, mister. We're a couple of goons. Any day now, we might ask you for your autograph. I got you, boss. That Trent guy is now a suspect, right? Quite correct, Hubert. Did you notice the way he looked at Rita? Yeah, like he was nuts about it. So this Arthur Trent guy knocks off his own flesh and blood on account of the chip, right? Yeah, fundamentally, yes. Now, to prove our theory is correct and solve the murder. Yeah, but how do we do that? Uh, let's stop here a moment, then we can observe the stage door. I've seen stage doors before. Look, boss, how about some clues? A murder case ain't much good without clues. Diabetic could be killed by depriving him of insulin. That's what Bulldog Grumman said in the telegram. Insulin. Why, of course. I should have thought of it before. Should have thought of what? Why, the modus operandi. Yeah, the modus the, the, the what? The modus operandi, the manner of operation. Uh, that's Latin. It's still Greek to me. Yeah, get back here. You're better than shadows. Sure, boss. You're up. Do it. There they go, boss, out to dinner. Arthur and Rita. I think I know the motive for the murder. Now, about the method. Check Injection. Yes, I have it. Come on, Hubert. Okay, sure. Where? Back to the dressing room where we were in before. Both the brothers used to chill. Yeah, I guess they did. It was too big for any theater to give to just one guy. Arthur Trent won't return for a half an hour anyway. Yes. Here we are. Look, boss, I don't mean to criticize, but ain't this a little bit illegal? Don't worry, Hubert. We're on the side of the law. Oh, I guess I forgot about that. Now, we'll work fast. We can find what we're looking for quickly if it's if it's here. Now, this must be the makeup shelf that Frederick Trent used. Yeah, that guy Arthur is the type that would have taken the other one with the big mirror. You know, I never realized that actors use so many lotions and tinctures and whatnot. So many bottles. What are you looking for there, boss? Wait, I have it. This bottle. It's labeled insulin. You mean you... Got a clue? Possibly. It all depends upon what the bottle contains. You know, boss, it's nice to be home again. This is a swell joint. A good place to relax if you got the time. Well, Hubert, that's about all we do have now until we hear from the doctor. Yeah, he's a nice guy, that doctor. He's an old friend of Captain Drummond's. But why did you telephone Rita Cooper to stop in here on her way home? Oh, now you rest there, boss. Just rest, I got it. Captain Drummond's residence, Hubert speaking. Is there a Coming up. It's the dark boss. No, thank you. Yes, Doctor? Danny, the bottle you gave me contains a solution of glucose. Glucose? Uh, that's, uh, that's sugar, isn't it? Yes. Uh, doctor, if that solution were given to a diabetic instead of insulin, uh, what would happen? Why, that would be murder. 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 Thank you a great deal, Doctor. Goodbye. Oh, boy, we got it again. 
Uh, you stay here, Hubert. I'll answer. Okay, boss. It might be the Cooper, babe. Oh, uh, come right in, Miss Cooper. I uh, got your message. What's wrong? Oh, come into the living room, please. I'm sorry to have bothered you so late at night. Oh, you know Hubert, of course. Well, I am charmed again. I really don't understand. What does all this mean? Uh, sit down, Miss Cooper. Well, all right, but I can't stay long. I'm very tired. Well, you know what I've been through. Miss Cooper, I, uh, I had to speak to you. I had my suspicions, and I'm sure they would be confirmed. They have been. Will you please get to the point? Yes. Your fiancé, Frederick Trent, was murdered. Murdered? What are you saying? Murdered, I believe, by his brother Arthur. Oh. Why do you say that? Well, it's obvious that Arthur Trent is in love with you. Miss Cooper, you must be honest with me. Arthur Trent killed his brother because of jealousy. He was jealous, wasn't he? Yes. Tonight, Arthur and I, or Hubert and I, rather, found a bottle on Frederick's makeup shelf. It contained a solution of sugar. A solution that was given to Frederick in place of insulin. That was the cause of his death. It was murder. That's a fact, Miss Cooper. That's what the doc said. Yes, I wanted to tell you first. Hubert and I are going out when, when you're ready to leave. We're going to get that bottle and... Tomorrow morning, we'll turn it over to the police. To the police? Yes. You see, that little bottle is evidence that will send Arthur Trent to the electric chair. All set, boss? Yes, Hubert, quite ready. Here's your hat. And look, boss, on account of it's so valuable, maybe you better carry this bottle. Yes, if you wish. Oh. Boss, boss, are you okay? Oh, yes, I'm all right. The but... shot must have come from one of those open windows over there. Well, don't bother going over, Hubert. The man is probably well away by this time. It's lucky he was a bad shot, boss. No, he wasn't. The shot wasn't meant to hit me. Look at the remains of the bottle on the floor. Oh, that's right. There ain't nothing left. The exhibit A in our case against Arthur Trent has been destroyed. Hubert... That shot was fired by an expert marksman. I get it, boss. A sharpshooter named Arthur Trent. Yes, we're glad to see you, Inspector Hogan. You'd better be right, me. I've got 40 men surrounding this theater, and we haven't got time to play games. Oh, Trent is a murderer, Inspector. Sure he is. The boss is right. Keep out of this, you. We'll find out soon enough if you're right, then. We'll grab Arthur Trent as soon as the act is over. It's almost over now. And Rita has a gun in her hand. Hey, she must have bumped him off. Close that door, Pete. Don't let anybody in this dressing room. All right, then, Miss Cooper. Why did you kill Arthur Trent? It was self-defense, Inspector. He planned to kill me. To kill you? Yes, he was mad. He must have followed me to your house last night and then followed you and Hubert when you got the bottle. Just before the act went on tonight, I was arranging with guns on the prop table, and I found one of the guns loaded with live cartridges. What's that? You see, Inspector, the clay pipes and cigarettes that Arthur shot out of my hands and mouth are charged with a mild explosive. When pressed at the end, they explode. You mean you used blank cartridges on the guns? Yes, I timed the act to make it appear that the pipes and cigarettes were really shot away. A phony act. Uh, quiet, you. Oh, I understand, Miss Cooper. When you find, found live cartridges in one of the guns, you knew that Arthur Trent intended to kill you. That's right. So I loaded another gun and kept it handy. When we came to the finale, I, 
I saw him choose the gun that was loaded with live ammunition. He aimed it at me, and then I... Come in, Pete. Oh, Inspector, look at this gun. The one we found in Trent's hand. It's loaded with live forty-fives. Well, Hubert, that clears up the Trent murder case. Yeah, I guess so, boss. Well, you know, it's been nice knowing you. And this place of Drummond's is sure a swell journey. How about a short snort before I say goodbye? Very well, Hubert. I think we've earned it. And while you're fixing it, you might make it a, a long snort. Oh, uh, I'll get it. A telegram for you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Here you are, sir. Well, thank you. Hubert! Hubert! What's the matter, boss? Oh, we've got to hurry before it's too late. We've made a terrible mistake in the Trent case. Back to the climax of our story in just a moment. That's not a bad idea, Miss Cooper. Go right ahead. Yes, yeah, sister, drop the act. We know all about you now. I notice that you have your luggage packed, apparently, for a hasty departure. Yes, I'm leaving town tomorrow. I've had enough tragedy here. I don't think you leave. You see, we know now that it was you who murdered Frederick Trent by replacing the insulin with a sugar solution. What? And you did away with Arthur Trent deliberately. It was you who put the live cartridges in that gun, the one you knew he'd use for the finale of your act. You shot him. You almost got away with it. You're mad. No, Miss Cooper, it's you who are mad. Money mad. The Trent Trio was one of the most heavily insured acts in the show business. Wait till you hear this, sister. The insurance policy provided that if any two members of the act died, the surviving member would receive $200,000. And you happen to be the surviving member. Very interesting. And true. Doc, boss, she's got a gun. It's too late. Stay right where you are, both of you. I can shoot. Remember that bottle I shot out of your hand, Denny? Oh, dear. Now we'll really finish this up. As it stands, there are only three of us who know the facts. 
In a minute, there'll be one. Me. And I won't tell. Drop the gun, lady. What? No, oh, Inspector Hogan. Hiya, Inspector. Nice, nice. I said drop the gun. That's it. All right, Pete, take her away. Inspector, I, I, I don't understand. Now, how did you get here? Up the fire escape. I, I mean, how did you happen to come here? Well, uh, how about you? Well, we came here because of this telegram from Captain Drummond. Here, yeah, read it. Oh, uh, thought I'd check up on the Trents for you. Act insured for $200,000. Money to go to last surviving member of Act. Murder for insurance might possibly be motive, Drummond. You see, I uh, deduced the rest of it myself, Inspector. It, it was obvious that Rita was the murderess. Yeah, of course, it was obvious to you, boy. With Captain Drummond's help, of course. Inspector, I still don't understand how you happened to arrive here just in the nick of time. Uh, uh, here, you read this telegram. Hmm. Suggest that you keep an eye on Denny. He might need you. And it was obvious to me, Denny, that you'd come here. With Captain Drummond's help, of course. Welcome back. Well, I may be back from vacation, but Bulldog Drummond isn't. <laughs> uh, the idea of detectives being away for vacation or a trip or something like that is pretty unheard of in modern productions, uh, which are recorded on schedule months in advance. But during the golden age of radio, this was much more common when either a network or sponsor scheduled a program to be on for 39 weeks or 52 weeks, a program needed to be put out every single week. Now, if a star was sick or needed a vacation, there were two ways to go. Sometimes you have someone else play the lead, as we heard a few weeks ago on Mr. Chameleon. And this is the other route, having another character take charge of the action. This could be tricky, and you can understand why it wasn't done for Mr. Chameleon. In that universe, the police can't seem to tie their shoes without Chameleon's help. And the problem is that many shows relied on the detective being the most brilliant person around in a world full of very dim bulls. Here, Denny doesn't seem like a likely choice to take charge of a case, but I like how they handled it. He does step up his game a bit, as is called for with Captain Drummond's absence, but he's still Denny and quite believably limited. The use of the telegrams to kind of spark his action highlight our regular hero's perception and quick thinking, even without him being on stage, uh, without making our sluice of the week look totally useless. So I think the show strives for a delicate balance. Uh, Louis Van Ruten, who plays Denny, makes a good temporary lead. He had played Lee Rolls 
before, including uh, on a Nero Wolf radio series during the war, so he was an experienced hand and definitely up to the task. Also, Hubert is kind of a classic archetype of the era, a mug with a criminal background who becomes a detective's assistant. Uh, you would see that in many of things, uh, including in the uh, Saint movies. I think here it makes for a really nice contrast with uh, Denny's proper English gentleman's gentleman. Well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback, and we start out on Instagram with a comment from Julie regarding the dinner of death. A really good episode, but get Denny some good walking shoes. Thanks for the comment, Julie. I have toyed with the idea of doing a parody ad for April Fool's. Uh, I didn't get around to it this year. I was kind of thinking like a Brian Donlovey sings Calypso sort of collection. But, you know, a fund to raise money to buy shoes for beleaguered assistant detectives' feet... That might be a cause that uh, people could get behind, uh, for a parody ad anyway. And then we have a review on Good Pods commenting on the case of the double death. Uh, which came first, Mr. Chameleon or Bulldog Drummond? Uh, Bulldog Drummond. Mr. Chameleon was created for radio. Bulldog Drummond, of course, had a presence in film and started on radio in 1941. Mr. Chameleon actually premiered towards the end of Bulldog Drummond's run on the radio. They were on the schedule at the same time for about six months. Then we have a couple of comments from YouTube. And uh, listener writes there, this is great British detectives and their butlers are very cool. Thank you. And another listener writes, just uh, found you, so glad that I did. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate your kind comments, and so glad that you found us over there on YouTube. Well, now it is time for us to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Kathy. Kathy has been one of our Patreon supporters since February, currently supporting the podcast, at the Seamus level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Kathy. And that will actually do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And if you're enjoying the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. We'll be back next Tuesday with another episode of Bulldog Drummond. But join us back here tomorrow for Broadway's My Beat, where... Telegraph for you, boss. Yes, I know. Probably from Captain Drummond. Don't you want to see what it says? Not particularly. Well, on account of I am naturally suspicious by nature, do you mind if I take a gander at it? No, not at all, Hubert. Oh, gee, boss, thanks. You're right, it's from Drummond. Hey, boss, we're back in the running. What? Listen to this. A diabetic could be killed by depriving him of insulin. Moiter angle still possible. Suggest you follow through. Investigate all likely suspects. Drummond. My word. It could still be murder. You know, I felt it. That's male intuition. There's nothing like it. It's I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Great Detectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.